Hello again. The hourglass block has been around for ages. And you know what? It's a wonderful block to make an entire quilt from, or a table runner, or to be combined in a variety of other blocks. You'll find a lot of blocks out there that have a portion of the bigger block, an hourglass block. So with that said, this is an easy method to make an hourglass block. You can use two squares of fabric and end up with two hourglass blocks. The cool thing of it is, is you can start with a lot smaller pieces. So it's great for getting into your stash, which is exactly what I did to make these. So you can make a two color hourglass block, a three color hour block, hourglass block, or completely go scrappy, which is super easy. Either way, stay tuned to learn how simple this is. Hi, I'm Wendy J. Haney, and I'm here to show you that quilting does not need to be intimidating. You just need to have the right teacher that shows you in a method that you it makes sense to you. Quilting is a lifelong hobby that you will enjoy for years and years to come, and it is such a wonderful thing to make your own things, to have somebody come into your home and see a quilt and you go, yeah, I made that. The even better part is when you're gifting your quilts to others. I'm currently working on both a baby quilt and a wedding quilt. And half the fun, okay, more than half the fun, is when I'm going to be able to present those gifts to the, the wonderful families that are going to receive them. That just, that's priceless. Stay tuned and learn how to make these wonderful hourglass blocks. So let's get started. I'm making an hourglass block out of two colors, a very dark background and a lighter, well, I guess, <laughs> given it's got two pieces, whichever is the background, I'm using a dark and a light. It makes it really easy to show you how to do this. And as you can see, I have a little three inch block, so it's not very big. This is great when you're trying to go through and work with your scraps. So what we start with are two, right now I have two four inch squares a darker and a lighter one. And what's going to happen with this is when we're all said and done, this is going to turn into a three inch unfinished block size and a two and a half finished block size. So we take our lighter one and then my darker one. What I did was I drew a line corner to corner because what I'm going to do is we, we are going to take this and we're going to put your light, we're to put right sides together and we're going to put the dark on top because it's the easiest one to show you the line. And so we've got our line corner to corner. We're going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to sew two lines. You're going to sew on this side, a quarter inch of that line and a quarter inch on the other line. Okay, I already have that done to make this nice and quick. So here we go. I took it to the sewing machine. There's my center and I used light colored thread to make it really easy for you to see a quarter an inch on this side and a quarter of an inch on that side. Once we get done with that, you can grab a regular scissors if you want. I'm always using my rotary cutter and you cut on the line that you drew. And there you go. You have two half square triangles. I always generally press to the dark side. So I'm going to finger press these first and then finger pressing. I've discovered if you finger press first before you go to the ironing board, you really do get a crisper um, seam. So as you can see, I'm pressing to the dark side. I'm going to take those to the, to the ironing board because yes, you can do this and you can move forward, but your blocks will be so much cleaner and crisper and more accurate if you press as you follow these steps. Now I have my blocks, my two blocks that came out of my original two blocks. So now I have two half square triangles. I'm ready to go. They're nice and nicely pressed. Be careful with your pressing. You don't want to iron and stretch these out. So just do a nice job of pressing your seams. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put these on top of each other and we're going to want to nest these seams. So you want to get these seams right next to each other, nest them nice and pretty and get them together. 
But before I do that, I'm going to mark them because we are gonna do exactly what we just did with the last pair of fabrics. We are going to uh, draw a line corner to corner and then um, use that as our um, sewing to be able to sew again. So I'm, I'm actually using two things because I have a white, um, mar <laughs> oh, a white piece of chalk here, which works really well on my burgundy fabric, but it does not show up very well on my lighter fabric. So I've switched to a very fine pencil. Pencils are very nice for marking. This is a 0.5 pencil. The lead marks really well and it's a really nice fine line. Okay, so now we're going to make sure we put this so our dark is against the light on both sides. I'm gonna nest these together Get them nice and neat, because basically you want these nice and neat on both sides, because we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna sew and then, and yes, you might see here, I've got a little bit of my other square showing out the other side. Yep, this is, whoops, it moved on me. This is not perfect. But the cool thing about this method is that when we get all done, these blocks are gonna be bigger than you need by about a quarter inch, which means we get to trim them up to make them perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna do just what I did with the other one. I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on either side of this line. Back from the sewing machine, and as you can see here, we have our line, our sewing line, stitching lines, a quarter of an inch from our center um, line that we drew. So in this case, you know what? I can, I think I can follow a line with my rotary cutter there. All right, there we have it. And so then, ah -ha, da da, you open that up and you've got your hourglass and it should be perfect in the center. Your points match wonderfully. What I also do is I flip it over and I like to pinwheel my center so that I don't have a lot of bulk in the middle. <laughs> and most of the time, it's pretty easy to get that middle to just, there we go. Well, it's being putsy on me today. There we go. That I just pinwheel it out. I've shown this in a variety of videos. You just get that metal so that one edge, um, goes to that side and the other goes to that side. It gets you a lot less bulk in the middle. And then you would take this and go to the ironing board and press it because you want to press it. So now you have two of these. You have two hourglass blocks. Now the next piece is, I have one here that I've already trimmed or that I've um, already pressed. So now, as I mentioned, <clears throat> You are getting a block done and it doesn't need to be perfect because the reason I love this method is I'm not perfect and I prefer making these hourglass blocks in this wet method because then there's enough extra fabric around the edges that I can trim them up and make them perfect squares before all is said and done. So this block actually is about three and a quarter inches. But what we're gonna do is we're going to, I'm gonna use my, I'm using my OmniGrid ruler. This happens to be a six inch. Use whatever size you have. Um, hopefully you don't have to use a 15 inch when you're working with a four inch block, but hey, you know, whatever works. I line up the diagonal on my diagonal of my hourglass block. The key thing is if you're trimming it up to, in this case, three inches, you wanna make sure that around the edges on both sides, the, whoopsie, there is enough to trim it. So I do, I have about an eighth of an inch, a little less than an eighth of an inch over here on this side. The other important thing when trimming up blocks that have diagonals is on your corners. You need to have that. So here I've got my three inch line, it needs to hit 
that point. It needs to hit where your seams intersect. And the same up here. So keep your line on, you should be able to keep this line on your diagonal stitches. Line your three inch up here, right on the seam where your, your fabrics intersect and the same down here. Because if you don't, when you start putting these squares together and sewing them, uh, your points aren't going to be nice. Then we flip it and now this is the side that is already uh, trimmed so we can line that up and you still should have enough over here to trim. Once again, making sure you're three inch because that's what I'm trimming up. So it depends on what you're trimming up to size of. This is a, a four inch block that I made to two hourglasses and I'm now trimming it down to a three inch. I've got my edges, I keep my diagonal so everything is nice and even. And I do this and I trim it and now I have a perfect three inch block. My points are perfect, my center is perfect. I'm a happy camper. <laughs> I have a wonderful hourglass block now that I can add into a variety of other blocks. Okay, this is wonderful. I'm using two pieces of fabric. Well, if you wanna go scrappy, it's pretty easy. You just randomly choose two pieces of fabric and then two different, different squares. So here I've got a blue and I can put it, I could go with my blue with my burgundy. I could do another blue with my floral. You could do whatever you wanted if you just had a variety of fabrics and you wanted to put them together in a very scrappy hourglass blocks to have a variety of them. Then do one block with two fabrics, another block with two different fabrics, and then um, cut those and combine them and mix and match your half square triangles. Now that you've got your one hourglass figured out with two pieces of fabric, what if you wanted to use three pieces of fabric? I still wanted my background in the white, but I wanted to incorporate both the blue and the burgundy in my hourglass block. No problem. You start with your same four inch squares, but you make one pair using your background, your light color, and the, and, and the burgundy, and then the other combination is with your blue. So you do the exact same thing that I taught you at the beginning. You draw your line, sew on a quarter inch on either side, and do that with both blocks, and then cut them in half. Then you end up with, actually you'll end up with four of these. You'll end up with two blue and two burgundy. Then you're gonna put them together same way. You're gonna put your light against a dark and a light against a dark. Put those together, match your, um, nest your seams together, have your line drawn and sew um, a quarter an inch on either side of the the line and then when you're all done and you press things out bingo you have a block with three different colors so there you have it whether you want hourglass blocks with two colors or three colors or you want to go totally scrappy and just mix and match all of your blocks and how you coordinate them you're good to go with this method and it works really well when you're dealing with your scraps so that you can start with as small of a size as you've got Key thing to note is this will work with any size block you need. You just need to do a little bit of math. Start with a four inch block. It's trimmed down to a three inch. So start with a four inch. You'll end up with an unfinished block one inch smaller. Then your finished block size it is a half an inch smaller than that. Four inch, three inch, finish size two and a half. This works great also if you're dealing with charm packs. So you work with a five inch block, then you're gonna end up with a three and a half inch finished block. Let's try a layer cake. Yeah, that'd be a great way to get a quilt done very quickly using layer cakes. Starting with a 10 inch block, you're gonna end up with a nine inch unfinished and an eight and a half inch finished block size. You know, that's a pretty sweet size for a block 
and an hourglass block using layer cakes would be really, really stunning. Hope you found that helpful. Please leave me comments below if you have any questions or you want me to clarify something, be happy to do that. And I so appreciate you taking the time to watch. Take care. Thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate it. If you want to make sure you don't miss a single video I published, hit the subscribe button below and then hit the bell icon. And that way you will be notified whenever I publish a new video. But you can also find me over on Facebook, facebook.com slash Wendy, the initial J Haney. Or I have a Facebook group for those of that you that love quilting, needlework, books, wine, and wellness. You can find that at facebook.com slash groups slash life fulfilled. The name of the group is life fulfilled dash quilting, needlework, books, wine, and wellness. You can also find me over on my website, wendyjhaney.com. I will be doing more blogging over there eventually as I get more of my videos done. Well, I'll be blogging about those, but also maybe you see some things that I'm making here and you're going, ooh, wow, I just don't wanna make that myself. Well, a lot of those products will end up over there on the website that you can purchase for your friends and family. Once again, thank you so much for your support and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.